Hi guys and welcome to the Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is my second shot at this video because the first one, thanks to me, was out of focus. So we're going to try this one more time. As you know, this is part of the Texas Flycaster website at www.texasflycaster.com. I'm the only uh, person I am aware of that brings you semi-regular or regular reports on fly fishing in Texas. Make sure you at least fast forward to the end and watch the scroll. That's from TPWD, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. And what that is is a breakdown of all the lakes in the coastal regions by region um, so that you can take that information and you can conventional fish, I got nothing against that, or you can fly fish just by interpreting what you read there. And that's what I do here is I try to interpret some of this stuff for you, put it into plain English, plain fly fishing English, hopefully complicated by very fluorescent uh, verbiage. So anyway, let me get started. That was just the worst introduction I may have ever done, but let me get started here. My name is Shannon. This report's been going on for a number of years. Um, right now it's May 15, 2020, and we I consider May like the best and worst of times. What I mean by that is fish are getting active. They're everywhere, but in North Texas where I live, I live north of Dallas-Fort Worth, the wind and the storms coming through. We had a storm yesterday, canceled a guide trip, rescheduled for tomorrow. It'll be canceled because of the weather coming tonight and tomorrow. It, it's just what we did, and today is unstable. You know, what I do is I guide for carp on Lake Ray Roberts, so we need a lot of things to line up. One is the wind, and two, water clarity, and three, some sun. You can't go out without sun, because we, all we do, it's basically a combination of hunting and fishing. We're sight casting for carp and right now bass actually in shallow water. So it is um, an ultimate challenge when uh, one of those factors, one of those variables does not line up. Statewide though, there's a lot of opportunity still going on. Check the scroll. You'll see that by looking at that scroll that there's a lot of things going on. If you're not going out, if you're stuck in because of the weather, there's a couple of things, actually more than a couple, there's a bunch of things that, that you can do to prepare yourself for the upcoming fly fishing season. Now, what I'm doing is I'm tying flies of all sizes from little tiny flies, which I had here a while ago, but I don't have now. Little bitty flies for uh, carp to big old monster bait patterns for uh, going to the coast and salt water. So, those I'll I'll cut away here in a minute and, and send you or inter, insert pictures of those flies because they're so small and so big. Um, so if I seem a little bleary-eyed, it's because I've been tying a lot of flies. Like I said before, I had to go grab these flies. Is that uh, you know you can take your time now to get everything you've got ready to go. That means equipment. That means flies. This is these are the little bitty. Coyote cart fly that I tie. Nobody else, they're not for sale except by me at Pop Supply Shop, www.texasflycaster.com. Anyway, these are the cart flies, very tiny for big fish. You know, cart range anywhere from four to 10 pounds. So it's a lot bigger fish than a, a bass on average. Really fun. I love people's reaction when you talk about carp though. It's really strange. Now, now these guys, see I'm going to the coast here in June and all, if uh, everything works out fine, I may spend some extended time there actually. Uh, I might get run out of the house, who knows. Uh, these are synthetic deceivers and they have rattles in them. Here are the rattles. So something different, these aren't finished yet, these are just drying and then they will be uh, I'll put the eyes on all of them and they'll be finished. There's going to be a raffle. I'm going into raffles heavy and deep just like the rest of the fly shops and the people in the fly fishing industry right now since we're basically closed down. I'm going to raffle off probably a few of these sometime in late midsummer and then a whole box of clousers with a brand new uh, Cliffs fly box. That'll be our one raffle. There'll be a raffle also for a guided trip on Lake Ray Roberts, which I do for carp. That'll be great. The sooner it sells out, the sooner somebody gets to go. Those will be shown on the website, www.texasflycaster.com. Be sure you check there. 
there's a little be a little spot on the ad side that shows um, the raffles and stuff like that so you're getting ready you're getting ready for prime time let's talk about from head to toe what you need to know head of course you cover yourself from the sun this is Texas but also you need polarized glasses so I've been updating my polarized glasses depending on where you are whether you're on the coast or inland what, what your water looks like in general most of the time is how you want to select your own preference for the type of coatings on your glasses and what I mean by that is you can get them with, with bright green mirror, you can get them with copper mirror, you can get them with gray. And there's, there's all these things. There's some generalizations that they do. But what I've discovered over time is that everybody's eyes are different. So that if I love something, the other guy might hate it. You know. So what you got to do is, is talk to the people around you, arrive at a conclusion on your own. Um, you know, I find that you got to pay attention to how much, especially here, how much light these these uh, certain lenses let in. I'm hardcore Smith Optics, and they're really good and really responsive on any if you have any problems with your glasses or anything. Orders come quickly. Good people. Not a great place for getting prescription glasses, but still very good. SmithOptics.com. Good people. That's your eyes. Clothing, of course, lightweight, breathable, dryable, and all that. But one other thing is your feet. And we're going to skip, we just skipped all the way down to your feet. And what I have is this old, old, old pair of Sims boots that I've waited mile. It's old, old, six years old, which I don't know, by shoe standard and by the way we treat these shoes, that's an antique. What happens over time is you wear them out. I mean, that's just the way it goes. A lot of mud, dirt, sand gets in these and it grinds against the fabrics. The fabrics wear out. Um, these will go in the rafters of the fly shop. I mean, the fly bar. We're in from the fly bar today because there's so much construction outside. These guys are tearing up the street. But anyway, these will be hanging in the rafters. You can come by and look at them. Just give me a call. A free beer and a free uh, glance at all the historic relics. New, just came in the mail, and I am just in love with these at first sight. I liked them when I saw them online. This is the new Sims Clean Stream Design Flyweight Boot. Now, these flyweight boots, what makes these so good, by my opinion, they come in half sizes. I wear basically an eight and a half on my right foot, a nine on my left, so I went to nine and a half. Nine and a half was just right. You think about putting on a thin, uh, you know, waiting, wet waiting uh, sock by Sims. Get that to go with, and you're in business. So go up. They, according to the sizing, they run a, ha a little bit on the small side. So instead, if you can go up, if you normally went up a whole size, I'd say I'd say still go up maybe a whole size. This is a nine and a half. I wear eight and a half and nine on one foot so these guys look like they're going to make the grade best thing about them non-marking sole non-skid sole for the boat so that's great and you know as we're getting ready we also have to do some upgrades and some some improvements on the boat um, we're trying to run even more shallow this year in salt water and uh, that's going to be a challenge i don't have a tunnel hole on my boat but we're going to try to get that going um, I don't, let's see, one of the other thing you got to have is your brain. Your brain's got to be turned on. And here's how you, one way that I use to turn my brain on. I have a calendar on my phone just for fishing and put notes in there for fishing so that I get notified every year of whatever happened five, six, seven years ago. For example, um, Lake Levon a year ago today. I caught fish in a certain spot, caught a lake record there in a certain spot. I got a notification today. I didn't know when, when in that was. I knew it was sometime around this time of year. But now, because of the weather, I can't get back over there until next week. But I'm going to go back over there and do it again. Just because my calendar notified me. And you just put in your calendar on your phone to repeat every year. And then it begins to accumulate. And then you might get multiple notices on one day for one place. And you start to understand that's where you need to be. 
calendar very important another app that I love that a friend of mine told me about on the phone and you're gonna need this in Texas for sure predict wind predictwind.com predict wind app this is a great app with and for me color coding is a way to go and it just shows these arrows about the direction and, and the color code tells you the speed so you can just glance at it and know right below that I got many many apps but high def radar is another really good one that I use and I decided since I'm gonna be on the coast so much this year I went ahead and bought the future forecast which cost you like a, a subscription rate but it gives you it gives you their prediction caution caution will Robinson predictions are predictions they're not 100% accurate and they never they can't be it's the weather so I mean the weathermen around here are awful on TV they've been wrong much more than they've been right for about a year now I don't know what their problem is but anyway they're bad so that's that another thing that you want to do is if you got any broken equipment like uh, I had a I have a broken field recorder that the it works fine except it just the toggle on and off switch doesn't work so what I did was I contacted the company this is a little insider tip I contacted the company and they um, don't want to touch anything this is up in the Northeast I think in New York upstate New York or New York proper and uh, they offered me to a deal for about half price on the, the brand new version of this eight nine year old recorder um, to send it back get 50% off a new one and uh, they're not gonna fix it a lot of companies are doing that right now they don't want to touch anything that comes in they don't have to deal with it or they don't have the personnel in in in-house to deal with it right now especially in the Northeast um, so make your returns now and try to schedule that and the reason I bring that up is I got a GoPro Hero 4 and I really want the 8 really want to upgrade but I want two heroes on boat from now on and on site well this one is crumbling literally the casing and the front facing are crumbling off the camera otherwise I would just keep this camera and keep on going but it's falling apart literally crumbling at the at the uh, opening for the for the battery at the bottom and crumbling at the top right here for no good reason at all I mean I, I use it but I, I take care of my camera gear for sure so we're gonna try to pull off a deal with that one too I'm doing some other raffles. I've got fly fishing guided trips that I'm going to raffle off in the next month. And it just seems like a fun thing to do is raffles. It used to be considered gambling, but nowadays I guess it's normal. Uh, I was raised a conservative Southern Baptist, so maybe that's why I, why I feel that way about it. And we've got a brand new item to bring into market. This is not quite finished on the mold, but this is the brand new mold for the brand new fly line mat called the Clint and the reason we call it the Clint is because just like Clint Eastwood it never misses this is a gonna measure out to be a 6 by 36 inch mat biggest one uh, longest one in the market and the reason for that is I've, after being on other people's skiffs with mats I realized that a big square one is stupid because it has to if you're standing on a polling platform I mean a polling platform casting platform you have to curl up a, a square mat to, to fit between the side gunnel and the and the of the bow and the uh, legs of the uh, platform this takes care of that it'll slot it'll just lay right there you drop your line down 36 inches long with, with spikes on it so with 36 inches in length you're not gonna miss when you strip so I got one friend I named this after him actually it's Clint and uh, the thing with that one is you don't have to think about it my old mat it's still gonna be for sale it's the round one you've seen it everywhere by now I've sold a ton of them um, that one will still be available. This one's going to be more expensive because it's bigger. It takes more of the, the material I used to, to form those. And that will be available probably in about two weeks. I'm still finishing the mold on that. But keep your eyes out for that. I'll raffle a couple of those off this summer too. I'm raffling everything off. I might raffle myself off before this is over with. I think raffling is fun. But um, speaking of that, come to think of it, uh, if you're into raffles and getting deals or at least that gambling aspect of 
putting 10 bucks in on something check out two fly shops over in New Mexico there's one in uh, Taos and one in Santa Fe and those guys are having some fun with this raffle stuff so check those guys out I've got a relative that lives over there get this he spent maybe 120 bucks in raffle tickets for one of the fly shops and he won a Scott Radian rod it's a $900 rod and he won a Sage motive rod two rods from one place <laughs> and only spent 120 bucks for I don't know that's about 1400 in rods so think about those raffles and these fly shops support your local fly shop always um, I'm not local to many fly fishermen here in North Texas but anyway that's uh, that's how that goes um, the other thing is you know conditions locally great um, the weather bad uh, it's gonna all stabilize and fall out here soon make sure you check back and watch my videos from other waters I've been going to like East Texas I just I just threw up a uh, report on a little lake called Purtis Creek Lake in East Texas just the edge of East Texas not too far 110 miles from here and about 80 miles from Dallas which is perfect it's a, a neat little lake lots of largemouth bass didn't see any carp gonna end up hitting all these twice probably just because I want to see if there's any carp at any time on these ponds and lakes um, the next distance I'm traveling will be this week instead of east I might be going west to Bridgeport so if you know anything about Bridgeport let me know I've already got a couple tips on that about where to go I don't even know where to launch my boat so it'll be interesting um, as I said we'll be working on the skiff this uh, this summer starting real soon getting it even shallower than it already is if you haven't seen the video on, on running skinny in Texas it'll give you an idea about what I'm talking about where we're going with the with the shallowizing <laughs> shallowizing a skiff anyway thanks for watching guys have a great weekend it is going to be unstable here in North Texas but you should be able to get out and fish in other parts of the state be sure you call me uh, and if you want to be on my text list for hotspots man they're, they're happening now 940-380-0408 is my phone number Hopefully this video is in focus. If it's not, too bad. You're going to have to watch it out of focus and just maybe, maybe that's just how you see things anyway. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Have a great week next week. Watch the scroll at the end of this. <laughs>